Senator Sessions isn't the only Trump cabinet pick going through confirmation hearings next week. Cameron Joseph from the New York Daily News joins me now from Washington. All right, Cameron, Democrats are reportedly gearing up to challenge some of Mr. Trump's cabinet picks. But help us with the math here. They can't actually block anyone on their own. No, they can, and that's their own fault. They were pretty frustrated with the Republicans during the Obama years, and in 2013 they changed the rules so that cabinet picks only need 51 votes, no longer need the 60 that they did in every previous administration. So basically they ended up really hurting themselves uh, now because they only have 48, which means they need three Republicans to block any of these picks or at least get a few, uh, you know, one or two in a committee that could theoretically slow things down for some of these guys. So, you know, th there's a couple folks they're going to make a lot of noise about. I really think that Rex Tillerson might be the only one that they're able to block, and that's because actually some Republicans are a little nervous about having him as Secretary of State because of his close ties with uh, Vladimir Putin in the past. So in addition to Rex Tillerson, who else do you think Democrats might push uh, particularly hard against? Well, they've laid out eight candidates, which is basically half the cabinet that they're actually going to make a lot of noise about. Uh, Tillerson is number one with a bullet, I think, and I think Senator Sessions is definitely going to get a lot of targeting. Uh, the interesting thing about Sessions, he's very controversial, but at the same time, he's kind of a genial guy who's been around the Senate a long time. So even some of the more liberal Democrats I know uh, who are going to go at him pretty hard, if you privately told me, they kind of like the guy. So mm -hmm. it's this complicated issue where his politics are something that's really anathema to them. A lot of them think that, especially in immigration and uh, civil rights issues, which are two things that as uh, DOJ uh, he's going to have a lot of power over, uh, they don't want him to see him anywhere near. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how willing they are to go personally after him. Uh, Pruitt is another one they might be going after pretty hard at the EPA. Uh, Betsy DeVos at, uh, for education is somebody who has been very loudly critical of basically all public education, has never been to a public school herself or her kids. Uh, so those are folks that I think they will be making political points on. I think the only one that they really have a serious shot of stopping at this point at least, unless new information comes out as Tillerson. Um, do you think, Cameron, that they're going to narrow down that list and that focus, or do you think the strategy will be more sort of broad? Well, I think they're going to try and keep things as broad as possible and kind of see what sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you know, this keeps happening with Trump, where it's a target-rich environment, and because of that, Democrats don't train their fire, and so no, nothing really gets through, nothing really breaks through, and a lot of these folks are going to have their hearings. Uh, sessions is starting on Tuesday, but a lot of them start on Wednesday, uh, which means that all of them are going to be going at the same time, which makes it very hard for news to break through. And on top of that, it's going to be the day after President Obama gives his uh, farewell speech, and it's going to be the day that Donald Trump does his first press conference in about six months. And so it's going to be very difficult for them, unless they really concentrate their fire on a few of these folks, uh, to really cut through. And I think Sessions, because of the messaging, and Tillerson, because of uh, some of his Russia ties in the past, uh, are probably the two most likely to get the brunt of their anger. Yeah, as you point out, there's going to be a plethora of headlines to cut through on January 11th. Well, let me ask you this. In a news release, President-elect Trump named 11 new aides on Wednesday. Incoming White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus said, quote, these individuals will be key leaders in helping to implement the president-elect's agenda and bring real change to Washington. So there was also some uh, new senior staff names. Some of the picks include Omarosa Manigault of Apprentice fame and Bill Stepien, a former aide to Chris Christie. What do you make of those picks, Cameron? I think Omarosa obviously is the biggest household name. I actually thought that St Bill Stepien is the most interesting, uh, largely because he was the guy that Chris Christie fired over Bridgegate. Yeah. Yeah. He was the, the sacrificial lamb or the guy they threw under the bus or however you want to put it. Uh, there's no love lost between them and it's pretty notable that uh, Christie is not getting a job in this administration, but uh, Bill is. And so I think that says a lot about uh, how things have played out and also probably how much power that Jared Kushner has uh, in terms of shaping uh, his father-in-law because, you know, Christie really had been pretty well liked early on by Trump and uh, has been gradually forced to the sidelines and back in New Jersey where he's pretty unpopular at home right now. Yeah, quite a reversal of political fortunes for Governor Christie. All right, Cameron Joseph, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.